been following YouTube tutorials less and less, especially when it comes to farms, which I'm super proud of. It lets me do things like this gold farm here, which was a super fun farm to design and build and learn about from start to finish. But today we're getting into a new territory for me. Mob farms, I can do, but fully automatic tree farming, that's a new thing for me. Whoa, shocking, we're in my storage room again. The last thing that I want to add to my storage system, since I've done some chunk loading in here, which was my first time doing chunk loading, is a fully automatic tree farm. Since we're using shulker yeeting, I want to be able to completely replace all of that wood and more. We're going to build a fully automatic playerless netherwood farm. Now, there are some good caves directly under my chunk loaded area for my storage system. Um, you can see a portal there, a portal there, and then the other one is like over there-ish. And down in these caves are about where I think I would like to put this netherwood farm. The unfortunate thing is that means we need to go light them up. Which, if you've been around here for a bit, you may have picked up that caves are my least favorite thing in the whole wide world. Yes, it is ironic that I have chosen to largely live in a cave system. Alright, well. We're just gonna have to bite the bullet and do this. Which, I despise every, every idea of doing ah <sighs> okay how do we do okay not terrible all right let's see if i can do this without wool if we drop in here and take out shriekers, can we do it without setting any others off? Not with this water situation, we can't. Jeez. Okay, one down. Okay, let's fly across this way. And just set a few more in. That was a witch. That was a witch. Oh dear. I don't like that very much. Ooh, a zombie villager. I feel like you don't see them very much. Hate zombie reinforcements. Bah! No. No zombies. I'm not gonna lie, that looked like a hoglin for a second, and it scared the bejesus out of me. <gasps> Jeez! Ah! Alright, well, we could hang around lighting up caves all day, but that feels like another day project. Right now, oh, what the heck. We just wanna toss things into the system, and then the spot will just pretend it doesn't exist. That doesn't look nice at all. All right. So now this area is relatively protected and we can work down here with reasonable amounts of safety. Anyways, let's double check our spots that we're going to, or our chunks that we're gonna use. Yeah, so the four chunks centered around this pillar is what we're gonna use, which means we'll just probably pull this thing down anyways. Okay. That pillar's gone, and we'll definitely have to level out a lot of other area in here um, to make it buildable. But now we know kind of what we're doing, which is helpful. Alright, here's the last thing about this farm. So I looked at Azalea Farms versus Netherwood Farms, and I decided to go with a Netherwood Farm from Potato Craft. Here's the thing. It's another Light Matica farm. There's no tutorial. So, uh, yeah, wish me luck. 
there's a little bit more information about this farm around, which is great. Um, and it's a lot simpler than, you know, the crazy ice farm. So it'll be easier for me to troubleshoot and doesn't involve flying machines. So I think we'll be okay. With that said, I'm going to get all the last things pulled together that I need to get building this. And let's do a nice early video time lapse. But first, we're going to take a quick pause here. Because do you remember this from last episode? Um, if you, if you want, like, particularly cobbled too, like, you can always, you know, steal a couple of wither skeleton skulls and <laughs> do some deep slate mining that way. It won't come back today, but it is a secret tool that will jump scare us later. Well, tragedy struck in the middle of moving, and I lost the footage that it foreshadowed. The long and short of it is that I persuaded Paige to come fight a wither in my mines for cobbled deep slate and kind of maybe ended up dying, which is my first death to a wither, so I guess I'll take it. I also lost the footage of finding my diamonds, which were hidden here in my base all along. And also, the footage of finding the super close by end stronghold, which is right by the 1.20 outpost. I found myself the eye armor template in the process. One of the things that I did in all of the moving hubbub where I just kind of got into Minecraft and laid real low was I built this tree. Um, someone had like made a stump in this like garden area and I was like, all right, I can go off of that. And so now we have a cool cherry tree that I ended up modeling more after like a swamp kind of tree, you know, with the Spanish moss, just with uh, cherry blossoms and end rods mostly. Bits of bits of azalea and moss too, but I really like it. Anyways, let's get back to this tree farm. <laughs> Well, it's been a hot minute since I recorded that last clip. In that time, I have moved. I have had audio issues. Um, I have done a lot of just really low-key, grindy stuff on the server. But we have also more or less finished this thing up. Oh, yeah, another thing is that the server has updated to 1.20.4 permanently, the whole server. So um, that means that I need to add Light Matica back to my mod pack before I can actually finish this, turn it on, run it, etc. But I've already added a notable exception to the Light Matic in our collection system. So, uh, the item filter was weird. I don't know what was up with it. So I just replaced it with a standard item filter because that was easy. Um, so now items go into these guys, the dispensers, that sit there and dispense out all the things up into this water stream, water stream, which is going to then take all the different products of this farm up to the top. Okay, this baby zombie's driving me nuts. But first, let's take a peek at a couple of things that have happened kind of off camera. The first thing is, I found deep slate emerald ore. So the next time the wandering trader comes around with some deep slate emerald ore mini blocks to trade, I'll be ready. Now I came out here to our starter base area to do a lot of that mining because as you can see, there's a lot of windswept hills around here. So I was mining just down at the bottom of this little tunnel. And as you can see, I dug for many 
many, many, still more, even more, lots and lots, and many tunnels and blocks. It's a hot minute down to the other end of those things. And I don't know if it's because this is deep slate that has generated under a previously generated area from 1.16, or if it was just really rotten luck, but I did not find a single deep slate emerald ore in here. I did, however, gather a whole lot of resources, including calcite, so we will take those with us. Well, the bat scared me. Our bats are cute now. They have the cute big ears. I love them very much. You, could you could you show us your face, buddy? It says no, I scared. But yeah, they have the cute big ears now. I'm very much a fan. We ended up finding the emerald ore north of here. I went looking around on the dine map for areas that maybe had been newly generated windswept hills, or like there was just the edge of a windswept hills biome showing in some generated area. And I did a little tiny bit of caving, which like, I don't do. Well, talk to the head. But yeah, I don't do caving. I hate caving, it is the worst. But I did just a little bit of brave caving and um, came away with one ore. And then I did a little bit of strip mining, which turned into some water caving. Um, in that same area, and that led me to two more Deep Slate Emerald Ores, so I'm happy with that. I'll take it. I did a lot of that mining with a fortune pick, so we got a lot of cobbled Deep Slate out of that. Now, the rest of this is a bunch of mixed items, so what we'll do is we'll just dump them all in there. And let the system run. This is definitely the highest amount of items that I've put in this system at any given time. So let's see how it does under a little bit of stress. Okay. Well, so far so good. I have a good amount of faith in my chunk loaders. Let's make sure they're running. And I did put in a little bit of a bamboo farm here too, so that we could also be getting some of that I hear it going. Okay, yeah, it's going. Yeah, I put in a little bit of a bamboo farm so we could have some of that just kind of passively collecting. The other happening of note is back at the shopping district. We, my friends, have sold some goat horns. Finally, we've sold a ponder one and I think a sing one, yeah, and a seek one. I stocked the goat horns before we updated to 1.20, which was like last September maybe? And one person had bought a goat horn prior to this. So, I am very happy to have some of those being bought. It makes me happy. Okay, so we have a couple of little things to uh, do up in here. And we don't have TNT in there yet, even though, you know, it looks like we do. Um, so, I think that's supposed to be like that. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to add lava and we need to add TNT. And I'm terrified. Oh yeah, that's, a, that's another fun little thing is this is a slime chunk over here. So, we may, since our current like slime chunk that we know about is in another hostile mob farm, we may go ahead and add that farm in in this area, even though I don't super want to do that. <sighs> it's also really scary putting it next to a lit redstone line. Bam. <gasps> okay. Now I went and watched um, Potato Craft, or I think he, I think he's recently changed it to Potato Craft because I just noticed that, and I didn't think that's what his name was actually before. Anyways. Um, 
I went and watched his video talking about B36 TNT. And oh my goodness, it's super cool. Anyways, that's what these uh, TNT dupers are, is they're being B36 TNT duper. Highly recommend his video on the subject if you don't know anything about it, like I didn't a few days ago. Boom. No, 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 no. Wait. No. Oh, okay. At least it didn't get into anything else. I can take a little fire damage. It's all loaded up with bone meal already. I'm really scared. I really... I'm, I'm terrified of starting this farm and everything blowing up. The good news is it's a really fast build, but the bad news is I might not fully know what happened, you know? Um, so, actually, let's go ahead and turn like Matica off because my eyes hurt. And I guess we should turn our block sounds back on. I just have these droppers running constantly, which is why I'm not a huge fan of the block sounds down here. But, let's do it. Let's start a replay mod recording first, so that if something goes wrong and things explode terribly, we know at least we can go look at it. Alright. Are you ready? Let's do this. Then we run over here. And we watch. Okay. Oh, it's taking a hot minute. There's one. And there we go. Is the TNT gonna dupe? Why is the TNT not duping? Why is the TNT not duping? What the heck? Okay. Let's turn it back on briefly. Okay. So that's all turned off. And this is all still... Like, it's not timery. Is what's happening. It's just stuck in a feedback loop. That is not supposed to be power. Gotcha. Is that happening on the other side too? Aha! Let's try this again. Turning light Matica off because. Ugh. Okay. It's just turned on. Ah, it's supposed to be in subtract. All right, whatever number time this is, is definitely the charm. <gasps> We've got explosions and things not dying of explosions. No, never mind, things are dying of explosions. Never mind, things are dying of explosions. <sighs> They're not supposed to die of explosions. So, looking at our replay, thanks past D, you can see that the problem is just a piece of user error. In all of our starting and stopping the machine without clearing the blast area, we reached the push limit from this feed and stems started pushing up into the duper so things inside couldn't move like they should have. Also, if we look over here, this glass keeps getting exploded. So let's replace the glass with a blast resistant block and clean up our duper mess and hopefully things should work just fine. It gets real loud up here, not gonna lie. Items are sure just running upwards, and even though I've left it chunk loaded a few times now, nothing has broken. So, that's what we wanted to see. And if we peek in at our warp stems, well, we have, we have a lot. So, we now have a new utility wood. And our cobblestone is not in bad shape either. Another thing I did while messing with this farm and letting it run because I just wanted a lot of wood is this little project. So I just watched recently the uh, newest B-Dubs Hermitcraft video, which may not be the newest one by the time this video gets out. I don't know. They were, you know, trying to figure out how to make drip leaf stay down as long as possible in order to use that fantastic little 45 degree angle. And 
Well, this is what I came up with. This isn't fully vanilla, but it uses the armor stands um, plugin that we have on both this server and is on the Hermitcraft server. Um, and so what I've done is I've taken mud because it is shorter than one block, but you can still plant drip leaf on it. And then it makes a, a platform for an armor stand to like be on the edge of and just constantly push it down. Not totally vanilla, but useful. Useful if you have the ability to use armor stands like this or if you want to hook up some weird redstone dispensary thing that splashes invisibility potions. That could work too. The funny thing is you can see the chunk border where this chunk has been loaded by um, chunk loaders since I set this up. And then this, this spot was not loaded by the chunk loaders and so it was loading in and out as I was kind of going in and out of the cave. So I don't really care for the way it ends up being super uniform when you leave the area. But I feel like this could work in a really cool way for some sort of like living roof where maybe it's not entirely made of, of drip leaf, but like has drip leaf uh, mixed into it and there's a little bit of movement like that. That seems really cool. Or, you know, other other projects, too. That was just the first one that came to my brain. We've spent a lot of time underground lately, and especially in my storage room, and I don't think that's about to change anytime soon, but I am chomping at the bit to get going on some new builds in the caves around here. Okay, okay, there we go, there we go. Um, we've got lore coming. But the storage room itself is in pretty great shape, if not the most pretty still. Um, and I have some really cool plans for adjacent caves. We, we need to be making our way down into the ancient city. I was up top mining sand and terracotta a couple nights ago, and a wandering trader came by with that deep slate emerald ore. So I got the mini box for that, and honestly, those are staying in here too. Honestly, maybe my lodestone mini blocks should go in here as well. I should probably clean this up before wrapping up the episode, right? We don't want to leave leave messes around. There we go. All good is new, and then we get to do my favorite thing. Bye bye. Look at him go. Yeah, I'm still obsessed with my storage system, can you tell? We should sell shroom lights. All right. Let's go ahead and just, what is that name tag? Oh my goodness, it's from an, another one of my armor stands. Ah! Anyways, let's stick shroom lights over here. Let's see, we did a diamond per stack for all of these. Where could one get a red mushroom? Actually, let's see if the overshroom has mushroom blocks. I don't mind spending a couple of diamonds, but also I have no idea. Okay. I was going to say, I have no idea if this has been stocked or who runs this shop but it works out how much are stems a diamond for 32 okay oh a diamond for two stacks all right don't mind if i do and we do need a sign anyways i wanted to go peek at um the lights shop because I'm curious if, one, it's even been restocked recently. I don't think the uh, proprietor has been around online at all in a very long time. But I'm not exactly 100% sure who the proprietor is. So, mind the lava. Yes. Oh, Terralyn. Yeah, no. Um, so we get shroom lights, a diamond for 16, and it is completely sold out. Cool. Should I be selling this for more than a diamond per stack? We still waiting for the, the clay shop? We're still waiting for the clay shop. Come on, I want to buy clay from you. 
All right, well, with that all taken care of, I think we have accomplished plenty for this episode. You know, I've been trying to work on doing a little bit less in my episodes and just showing more of the in-between and the fun bits because, oh, I've gone a little crazy with the Minecrafting sometimes. But then I make an episode where, like, we have one main, main project, but then we do a dozen other things anyways. Ah, oh, well. Anyways, once again, shout out to Potato Crap for this fantastic farm. It was really easy to make, you know, once I paid attention to all the details. And I am kind of really addicted to leaving this running for zero reason. So who knows how much warped stem I'm going to have. Uh, yeah, by the time we get around to next episode. Speaking of which, I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to like, and maybe even subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Bye!